So like, all morning I was thinking to myself, what am I going to do for my introduction today? And then I'm like, I know, I'll do a clever girl joke. And then I pulled the card up on the screen and clever girl is already on the card. Watsy, what do you want me to do here? I'm lost. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video. And today I have been asked to play a dinosaur stompy deck list. And we've done this in the past, but now we actually have a lot of new dinosaurs, including Hunting Velociraptor, which gives our dinosaurs prowl. So imagine we have some overcosted creature in our legacy deck. Not uncommon on this channel, honestly. But instead of just tapping a whole bunch of ancient tombs, what if we can just you know, say on turn two, play its prowl cost, and bam, three mana, six drop. That sounds pretty cool to me. So, like, reading the text here, you may cast a spell for its prowl cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a creature with any of its creature types. So it doesn't necessarily have to be this card. It probably will be in most cases, but just something to keep in mind. And like the Lost Caverns of Ixalan gave us some absolutely awesome dragons. How would you feel about a flying first striker that at the beginning of your upkeep you kind of draw two cards and you maybe make a 3-1 red dinosaur or get a treasure? Maybe both in some cases. This is a lot of value for a card that we can theoretically cheat into play for as little as three mana. And we also just have some very oversized dinosaurs with some assorted downsides. Uh, the pugnacious hammer skull here, uh, from the Latin word pugno, a verb that means to fight, is a 6-6 six -six that has no downside as long as we control another dinosaur. So let's look at the dinosaurs that we're going to be playing and the original decklist that was submitted. So this is the original decklist that Plum Wizard submitted, which was just kind of a a brainchild that wasn't really followed up upon from my Discord. And the idea was to kind of be this dinosaur aggro deck where you could do something like play a belligerent yearling on maybe turn one, or not turn one in this version, on turn two, and then curve it into something like a rotting regisaur, attack for seven, attack for 14, and the game is over. But when I look at this deck list, I just weep openly for the mana base. Something that I talk about a lot on this channel is when you are playing Ancient Tombs in your deck list, it's going to make your mana base feel like it's one color more than it really is. So this is a Jund deck list that's also playing Ancient Tomb, making it a four color deck list with very few cantrips and relatively few pieces of fixing. Like we have Once Upon a Time as a free cantrip if it's in our opening seven. But beyond that, we have Ignoble Hierarch for mana fixing, and I'm not going to count Green Sun as mana fixing here, because most of the time that is just acceleration, not actually mana fixing for colors. And we're also trying to like play some Planeswalkers in here as well. And I thought that this just wasn't going to get the job done. I was also really worried about the mana count. Like, this has 22 lands plus 7 accelerants in a deck that has like six drops and multiple different six drops in it and I just didn't quite think this was going to work out. So here's my updated version of the deck list here. I've added Chrome Mox because I think playing a card on turn one relatively consistently matters. I don't think we go like Spirit Guide deep or anything but I think having a total of 10 mana accelerants in game one scenarios is going to make it so that I can actually cast the like big scary cards in my deck. Now, it's not like doing this is free. In doing this, I am cutting the Trinospheres from the main deck, and I'll talk about that more in a second, as well as my only real cantrip. But I'm trying to keep this deck as being on theme, so I'm not just going to add you know, generically good cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker to the deck to help smooth out the draws. So I move Trinosphere to the sideboard. Uh, essentially, I'm just going to give up the combo matchups in game one here. I just 
don't know that I'm going to win them with two Trinospheres or even four Trinospheres in the in the main deck. I just don't think that's super, super realistic. And I'm instead going to opt for Lightning Bolts in the main deck, rationalizing that this can help us fight against fair decks in game one scenarios uh, quite a bit. Um, as a reminder, Trumpeting Carnosaur also has a mode where you can just three mana discard it to uncounterably nuke a small creature or planeswalker. And so in having seven removal spells, we can help pave the way for something like the Velociraptor to get in and actually kind of do the thing. I've also added one Hulking Raptor as a Green Sun target as a way to kind of jump us up to that next bit of mana. And if we naturally draw this and it helps us to get to one of these cards, like, that's cool too. Um, probably the weirdest thing that I've done, and I'm not 100% sure if it's correct, is that I've put Grove of the Burn Willows into this deck as just a generic untapped red-green land with air quotes, no downside. I was worried about adding more fetches to, like, this Ancient Tomb mana base like, I think the four is reasonable because the four can find our basics as well as our taigas. But I didn't really want to go deeper than that. And I'm also kind of rationalizing that, like, these things hit like a fucking truck. And so one or two life off Grove of the Burn Willows is maybe not going to be the deciding factor of the game in most cases. I've goldfished a handful of hands with this and... In terms of, you know, the gold flip fish room, nobody is interacting with me. It is doing legacy power level things. We'll see how it starts feeling once we're getting like dazed and wastelanded and such. As far as the sideboard goes, I've kind of consolidated things into a couple of categories. I have eight cards primarily for combo here. Uh, it's possible Trinosphere is just supposed to be Thorn of Amethyst to just come down a turn earlier. I'm on the fence about that because Trinosphere often wins harder than Thorn does. And like clarifying my words here, I mean, Trinosphere has a greater chance of just winning the game on its own if it comes down, whereas a Thorn is usually a bump, but Trinosphere is an entire pothole, and I'd rather have the pothole here. So we have Graveyard Hate, Traditional Combo Hate, Artifact Hate, and Generic Cards to bring in for blue matchups. I kind of ran out of sideboard slots. Um, I also feel like a couple of Red Blasts would be reasonable, like dropping a Carpet and a Force of Vigor for two Red Blasts, for example, is a reasonable way to have a little bit more game versus things like Murktide Regent and Uro. But I think concentrating and like having a set game plan for a handful of matchups is going to be better for this meme deck list than trying to cover everything like i would with a more competitive deck list so yeah we'll see how this one goes if you want to try it out for yourself the deck list is available in the video description to moxfield.com and if you need to buy any of these cards check out cool stuff inc and use promo code thrabenu to save five percent on your order let's battle all right for round one here I've kept a ramp hand. My opponent seems to be passing their turn fully, uh, which is scary. Does that probably indicates that my opponent is playing a combo deck that is just like a mana source away from going off, you know, like the oops all spells sorts of things. Also, apologies. Round one is definitely a cough drop round for me here. My, so my throat's just a little sore right now. Hey, I called the exact deck. That's the good news. The bad news is I'm fucking dead. <laughs> uh, my opponent just combos off, and we cannot win game one versus this deck basically ever. So we can bring in Ley Lines and Trinospheres to help out with this matchup. To a lesser extent, we can play things like Collector Roof and Force of Vigor, but I don't know that I'm really excited about that. I'm going to have to board in eight here. Uh, which is a lot. I'm not sure what the last two cuts are. I probably cut two of these. Keep some number of these. They're they're good to prowl in since they discover. So this is turn one ignoble hierarch. Turn two collector oof. That's not bad, but I think I want a leyline or trinosphere hand. Uh, so we'll mulligan to five. 
I did board them in, right? Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we'll go to four. I have Mulligan to four. I have not seen a Leyline or a Trinisphere in a lot of cards. That's frustrating. What the fuck, deck? Two. I have found a Trinisphere. Doesn't really do me any good. I'm mulliganing to Leyline this point, or I'm just conceding the matchup. Nope. That is no Leyline of the Voids in seven different hands. Uh, math nerds, I'll let you uh, crunch the numbers on that. All right, let's do Dino Things. Today's video is sponsored by Eminence Gaming. Their command tower software that they use to run events is awesome. And in January, I'm going to be attending another one of their events, The Boil, uh, in Atlanta at Charlie's Collectible Show, which is, no joke, one of the coolest venues that I've ever played at. If you are interested in some CEDH and or meeting me, consider checking it out. This is an awkward hand. Um, if I treat this as mana, this is just six mana sources and not really where I want to be. So let's ship that. Uh... Boy, that's awkward, because this isn't good without another dinosaur, and this requires five cards to get to three mana, and I can't keep two of these. I think I'm supposed to go to five. Okay. I think I have to play this out a little more slowly than I otherwise might like, but I think this one is a keep. I don't think I use the green sun for a dryad arbor, though. I think I awkwardly go Ancient Tomb and pass, which invites a Wasteland on this Ancient Tomb. But I would like to play this first dinosaur uncounterably, and then get a second dinosaur off Green Sun. Damn it. Yep. But if I lead on Forest, then I can't Cavern of Souls the creature. Do I want to pivot now and have this be a Dryad Arbor so I can cast this next turn? Probably. Just not thrilled about it because I don't have the follow-up dinosaur. But I think the cavern is very valuable. Are we gonna like be playing against like honest to goodness Maverick? Also, do I just remove that noble hierarch after my opponent has mulliganed? Probably. It's a little weird. Because this doesn't play towards my best top decks. Like, this doesn't play well towards me just top decking a dinosaur, whereas playing this and me top decking another dinosaur is just insane. But I think this is going to be much better in the fail case hands. And we're looking mavericky over there. Don't no bowmaster. That's not a bowmaster. We'll take it. Okay, I mean, that is a dinosaur for the purposes of this thing. So, cavern on dinosaur. Drop the Hammer Skull, and then we'll take our chip damage with Dryad Arbor, which is safe unless our opponent is playing something kind of crazy like an Invigorate. All right, opponent's at 19. All right, we do have Knight of the Reliquary here. I'm looking for any land to let me play the Bone Horde Dracosaur. Do not get it. That's okay. Uh, we can get it a little bit later. We don't have a stun counter on this because, like, we're going to attack with this around. So we'll take our six. They're at 13. So we could get Wastelanded into Oblivion. That matters a bit less with this around. My opponent is pausing for very large amounts of time. I'm not sure if they are distracted while playing or they don't really know what they're doing. I'm going to be, like watching for misplays to try and like deduce which of the two it is we've got four mana going into something which i assume is like a green sun it is they're going for grist i assume they're gonna take out my pugnacious hammer nope okay so knight of the reliquary can turn into a six six I don't know whether or not my opponent is going to have something like Maze of Ith in game one. That drastically changes the equation here. I'm going to attempt to take out the Grist. Opponent says no. And I will just continue to drop dinosaurs into play until that stops working. This one flies, so 
Wrist might need to minus sacking Noble Hierarch or a Dryad Arbor to kill this. See that the Knight does end a turn. Dunking the non-basic. Going for Cradle. So they've floated three mana. They're sacrificing the Hierarch, I assume, to kill my Dinosaur. And then Renegade Rallier. Okay, so we are on a relatively slow control pile. Got it. The frustrating thing here is that the Knight of the Reliquary can now become bigger than my uh, Pugnacious Hammer Skull, so I can't attack, uh, which means that I just have to pass the turn, uh, which feels pretty awful because my opponent has active Knight and Grist. Uh, sure. My opponent might have turned the corner on this one. Sure. Nope, no Dryad Arbor yet. All right, they're just going to keep plussing. They can, like, alternate plus minus to take out my good creatures that I play. I do have some things with, like, Ward and Shroud and such in the deck, but this might be the point of the video where I just, like, scoop it up for viewer enjoyment purposes, because I don't think we win this one, especially after missing another draw here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pack it in. My sideboard options aren't exactly great here. Like, I can play Leyline of the Void specifically for, like, Knight of the Reliquary and Fiend Artisan-style cards that scale up with the graveyard. I might have to. I'm going to try not to for the game that I'm on the play. I'm just not going to sideboard, and for the game that I'm on the draw, I think I reluctantly play Leylines. This is awkward, but I think fine. Assuming any green card draw... I just have turn two Shifting Ceratops while also having the ability to Lightning Bolt a turn one play from my opponent. I think I am happy enough with this. I could actually crunch the numbers to see what my chances are of that actually happening, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Thoughtseize on Chrome Mox is the scariest thing that can happen this turn. Yep. Oh, um, I still have the Chrome Mox. That's great. I did not draw the green card that I wanted, but this is a pretty reasonable substitute. Little Taiga, Ancient Tomb, play the Raptor. If the Raptor gets through, I get to Prowl, and then put this in. We've got second land drop. Seems like a green sun for Dryad Arbor. I will just intend on bolting. Mana's a touch awkward here. Like, would I let my opponent just chump block with this to stop Prowl? I think so. And I just save the resources for later. All right, let's send it. Okay. So I've hit. Now I can go ahead and cheat on mana and Prowl in this creature. And now it's just a question, do I Lightning Bolt the Dryad Arbor? at the cost of another lightning bolt. I think I'm far enough ahead that I can do that. So we'll take that out. And then we've still got a reasonable attacker versus a just naturally played out knight, at least in the short term. Got the third mana and a plague engineer, uh, presumably on dinosaur. Uh, not a great draw. I can just keep attacking for two with this safely, but that doesn't really end me the game. I think I just trade the Shifting Ceratops to continue to push damage and hope that I draw well from here. All right, send them. No blocks, uh, which is kind of wild. My opponent ends up going to seven, and I'll play out some more creatures. And uh, we'll see if they have some crazy Gaia's Cradle Baseline here, where this ends up making a lot of sense, or like an Orcish Bowmasters that gets to ping and kill this, and then they just trade with this the next turn. But like not trading the first time might mean that just like trample damage gets them the second time around. It is a Green Sun, or a 5-5 five five Knight. The Lightning Bolt effect is so incredibly good right now. Land. Cool, cool. My attacks currently aren't the best. I can attack with just this Exalted and offer a trade with either Knight or Plague Engineer. 
probably what I have to do. Found it. Yeah, so like this trade could have happened last turn. And if it happens last turn, I don't trample over for an extra three points of damage this turn. Uh, which is kind of a big deal. It's especially a big deal because like if I have any dinosaur, I just like prowl and maybe not instantly kill my opponent, but it's a disaster. Sure. Knight continues to get big. Uh, my opponent is now in lightning bolt range. I've unfortunately used two lightning bolts this game. Renegade Rallier, sure. That represents another chump blocker. Uh, technically another dinosaur. We can try to go wide of what my opponent is doing here. It'll be tough. Let's see what sort of utility the knight has here. Going for Cradle. That's fine. I don't know that that's correct. They're on relatively few cards. It seems like Double Wastelanding Me has a very good chance of just locking me out of casting meaningful spells. Okay, sure. That's going to be a Grist. I presume could be another Knight. It is the Grist. Alright, losing Dryad Arbor. Take out one of these. We'll play the cards that we draw. Uh, this one, at least, in theory, might be able to attack. Um, but this is going to just continue to grow in a way that is not favorable for me. Uh, the knight's not activating. That feels very wrong to me. Uh, ooze is insane. That probably wins my opponent this game. Because what? They can gain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 life. Now Lightning Bolt isn't an out anymore. Attack with this as an 8. That doesn't matter. Flyer gets killed by Grist. Alright. I think my opponent made some missteps, but my deck kind of let me down here. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. Okay, um, no mana acceleration here. Probably means that this one is an auto mulligan despite having double bolt. The shuffler hates me today. Uh, you know, if this is a green source, like, it can be a risky keep, but still be functional. Uh, we're looking at a five-card hand that <sighs> cannot play spells. I maybe keep something that looks like this in the hopes of drawing into a functional game. Like, my deck is a lot of mana, and I think at this point, we're not getting better. I don't think it takes all that much for the hands to be keepable here. Underground C, after a mull to five. That's scary for us. We're hoping that this is a fair deck that just had some rough hands and not like a Doomsday or Storm deck or something like that that can do something more unfair. Okay. Uh, potentially a Grixis Delver deck on some bad beats mulligans here. A Green Sun. That's fine. It's mana, but that's fine. I think I just do it for the Dryad Arbor here. Do play around days. I hate how vulnerable I am to Wasteland currently. The Delver. Yeah. Okay. At least we can bolt them Delver and fuck. Move on with our lives is what I was about to say. Uh, let's Lightning Bolt this. Um, we've had two mana sources destroyed, and it's turn three, after my opponent mulligan to five. Um, I have no valid plays here. I have very good plays after hitting one more land, though. Especially if my opponent has cards like Fatal Push in hand that aren't quite going to be functional right now. Uh, let's just get more Tigas. Um... Assuming no interaction, this one's way better, but I'm going to just cast this one first and let this one be like the day's fodder. There's the floated mana. There's the days. And that's fine. 
Setting my opponent back a land drop so that they can't possibly do something like Merktide Regent is like a okay with me. All right, there's the red mana. Uh, no dragon, Dragon's Rage channeler here. Uh, I will just jam this into another daze. Like, my opponent has access to Merktide Regent on their next turn. If I set them back another Merktide turn, that's fine with me. And if they don't, and I get to do the thing and, like, discover, that's really cool. All right. Oh, man. Those Chrome Mox draws are brutal. I do not expect this to connect in one capacity or another, be that removal spell or chump block with Orcish Bowmasters or whatever. Here we go. Grixis Delver confirmed. Okay, it's just a bounce. Honestly, could have been worse. Uh, we are going to immediately redeploy it. Uh, again, days be damned. Force of Will pitching Force of Will. Uh, sure. Third land drop. Delver. Okay. Uh, uh, do I just kill the Delver? Or do I imprint to play a 5-3 ward? I think I just kill the Delver. But I think that one's pretty close. Goodbye. All right, there's a Bowmasters. That's fine, but annoying. It's just a large number of chump blocks versus my non-trampling dinosaurs. I'm going to take two here. There was no shuffle on the Ponder. I'm basically always looking for the card Merktide Regent. Yeah, I would accept the dragon, Dragon's Rage Channeler here. So we have... A large thing in play and future large things that I draw will resolve around soft permission like days for the most part but I'm gonna get hit for three then six I'm gonna be on a three turn clock in the air uh, and I have just drawn more mana unfortunately so I can attack my opponent might even just take it and then if I get attacked for eight back just dead the following turn rather than having two turns. How many reach dinos am I working with? There's the bone hordes and the shifting ceratops. Have, I think two lightning bolts remaining. Green sun works as well. All right. I think I am very sadly going defensive here. Like, I hate it. All right. Expected brazen borrower is expected. Uh, Wasteland is not really that big of a deal here. Take six. Go to seven. Need a live draw or I am dead on board. Molten Collapse to destroy target creature. My opponent does have the mana for ward. Need a Bone Horde here? No. Draws were really feast or famine. So I really like Carpet of Flowers to get me to higher mana amounts to cast my reasonable cards against a pile of like orcish bowmasters and lightning bolts and stuff i think i make this substitution i don't think i'm gonna ley line because i don't really want to cut creatures here yeah this is great like very legitimately great multiple carpet of flowers so like the first one eating a force of will or force of negation isn't just game over and the Carpet of Flowers can also just be my mana fixing for red. Now, if both Carpet of Flowers get answered, it is a pain in the butt, but... Oh, well, that's awkward. I'm supposed to play around days, but then it, like, makes Wasteland considerably better against me. All right. I believe we do yes, make red, and just jam this now. I don't care if this gets countered. Like, if it doesn't get countered, great. If it gets countered and sets my opponent back a mana, that's also okay. All right, there's a Volk. Ponder goes to the yard. So with, like, a fetch land or a wasteland, my opponent will be in business. This is okay. Uh, this can't be countered. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, green. Uh, it stings a bit, but it's not like we're not playing the uncounterable 7-6 trample hexproof. 
And then we'll see if my opponent plays another island that allows us to play the Bone Horde Dracosaur. Ooh, we get Wastelanded here. Sure. I don't know how much the Wasteland matters, though, if I'm being honest. I won't use that ability. Let's bash for 7. Opponent goes to 12. I think it is worth tapping this Ancient Tomb to cast this spell. Like, this is six Oh, hell yeah. This is six points of damage that I've done to myself, but this is just, like, lethal amounts of damage next turn when Dragon Rage Channeler currently can't block. Yeah, get in there, bud. I guess don't double bolt me to the face. Okay. Uh, sure. So this is two mana, three mana, four mana, five mana, six mana. I could cast a green sun for one of these, give it haste, attack in, or one short of lethal, right? So this gets blocked, six, or no, it's five power, five power. So this gets blocked, six, 11, 12 exactly. Uh, that sounds good. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, the five gets it. But I need the sixth mana to activate. That doesn't work. I can get one and use it for reach. I don't think I'm supposed to do that. I think I'm supposed to save it till next turn. I think I make red and do this. This puts me in lightning bolt range, which I am not a fan of. I'll pass turn and we'll go for lethal next turn if we don't die to bolt. Two card types in Graveyard. I guess it's also possible that I can take lethal from this growing. All right, there's the bolt. Unfortunate. Just short of taking that one. All right, we are paired against a Yorian deck. Um, I'm going to keep, keep this, hoping that we are playing against a blue Yorian deck and not, like, Death and Taxes. Because Cavernous Souls with, like, these dinosaurs is perfectly fine if we are playing against a blue pile. Ooh, I think I just play Ancient Doom and pass. I don't think I give up a card for Chrome Mox here to accelerate things out, given that I would like to play every creature uncounterably if possible. Dino. Dinosaur. I think I'm just going to lead on this one. We don't necessarily have to just prowl in when we're only cheating one mana. And it might just eat a removal spell anyway for the sake of tempo here. Our little Boneyard Dragon friend probably has time to do its thing in a matchup like this one. All right, it did eat the swords. That's fine. For sure, sure. I will get to decide whether or not I Chrome Mox on my next turn. Uro. Uh, yeah, Uro's scary. Shifting Ceratops is pro blue for what it's worth. Trumpeting Carnosaur, which I always just have next turn. Is that right? Four mana, Chromox, Imprint, Hierarch, that's five mana, Taiga, six mana. Uncounterable. Hell yeah. Chromox imprints this. Double uncounterable dinosaur. Let the record show. Hasty double uncounterable dinosaur. No, why do you hate fun? What has this Shifting Ceratops ever done to you? It's okay, like, hopefully we get to live the dream next turn of, like, Carnosaur into the Bone Horde Dragon. With my luck, I'll hit Chromox, though. All right, Uro. 23. No land drop there, which means that their hand is full of gasoline. Here we go. Red. Take two to do this. Here we go. Now we discover. Yeah, uh, we hit a bad one. Oh, I could have actually just put that into my hand. That was a misplay on my end. I forgot it's not uh, just like Cascade. Yeah, I, I should put that into my hand, and then it represents another uh, Shifting Ceratops. Oops. That's fine. That's a Mystic Sanctuary that didn't actually get to do its thing. Sure. I don't think I trade with that Uro. I think I need to be attacking back. 
Eh. Uh, we're going to attack in. Some pretty annoying things can happen in combat here. They don't this time. So we're going to play a dinosaur that's uncounterable. And then we're going to play a dinosaur that is uncounterable. And we're going to hope that we're going to go wide of this arrow. Rest down, sure. <laughs> Determinus. <sighs> All right. You have another arrow to just uh, really kick me in the teeth here. Oh, they can bounce the dress down. Stops a future trumpeting carnosaur. Sure. Yeah, go go wide to beat Uro. Lose to Terminus or Supreme Verdict. I'm a little surprised to see that island cycled when my opponent has six lands. I guess it's fine. They've still got five cards in hand. Um, I will continue to play Magic because I have some very silly cards in my deck that are uncounterable, but I expect to lose the game from here. Sure. I will concede to, like, a Monarch card, though. Uh, another arrow is pretty bad. So no land drop, so just five pieces of gas in hand. And arrow is immediately coming back. My window to reasonably be in this game is going to close quickly. That doesn't help a lot. That does not help a lot. I'm going to take one more draw step and then concede. But I have some things like Trumpeting Carnosaur that... Well, no, I guess that's not a great example because like, I know the dress down is known. Worth Aerolingas. Rax is five. We can we can concede to that. We're we're not beating that. So what am I doing here? Carpet of Flowers is solid. Probably change ignoble hierarchs into those. These are more resilient to Terminus and Supreme Verdict type cards, and then I can think about whether or not I want Trinospheres. I think I am going to play Trinosphere. When I'm on the play, I don't think I'll play it when I'm on the draw. Rough. Uh, this is fine. I'd probably get rid of the Hulking Raptor here. This is cheaper and can maybe come down next turn. And then these two are innately uncounterable in, in case something ends up happening to the Cavern of Souls. One on six. Carpet's in play. See if my opponent fetches. If they don't fetch, I can't necessarily do cool things this turn. I'm going to drop a Dryad Arbor awkwardly and pass. No end of turn. Lord's Plowshares on Dryad Arbor, which is not surprising. Uh, sure. I think Taiga is better than Dryad Arbor there, but I also wouldn't have Wastelanded like this is a Cavern of Souls matchup. So let's say no. I'll play out a second carpet. I'm going to make this land drop. It's a little awkward if this wasteland means that my opponent just has like life from the loam or a second wasteland, but in the world where my opponent just refuses to fetch or fetches non-island cards, I need to be able to top deck a land and play this next turn. Sure. Uh, this is an awkward staring match, but it's an awkward staring match where when the floodgates break, I have a lot of power. Uh, but my opponent has mono fetch lands over there. There we go. So, I don't think I'm going to play around like a back to basics type thing. I already have multiple carpet of flowers in play that will give me mana if something like that happens. All right. Basic planes, taiga, savannah, endurance, leyline binding, sure. Oh, that's fine. There's some nice blue mana. The one ring. Annoying. Because now my haste damage is a lot less cool. Uh, notably, this is target opponent, so Carpet of Flowers also does not work this turn. Uh, which is quite annoying. I think I just play a bad card here and then play a card with haste next turn. Uh, one ring doing some work here. It's just going to be a land drop and pass. We're going to do some marginal deck thinning here. Ooh. So this is one. 
slightly awkward. I'd really like to prowl this in. That may or may not actually be happening, depending on whether or not my opponent fetches. Let's go yes, add some green, and I guess go no on the second one. So we'll shifting ceratops. We'll give it haste. I'll crash in both my creatures here. And hope they don't have something like endurance that can be a nice flash blocker. Mm. And more islands, which is nice for future turns, but oh, it's just a hard cast of solitude. That's rough. Sure. So this is only worth two mana right now. I can't get to prowl levels. And also, like, I would like to do this uncounterably. But I can play both my creatures next turn. Lifelink from this solitude is legitimately pretty annoying, though. Not to mention just the ten cards in my opponent's hand. Sure. All right, they're going to bounce the one ring. Sure. Done a very good job at minimizing my carpet of flowers. For sure, sure. And up the beanstalk. So much card advantage. Sure. Well, let's go yes. Make some green mana. I have to let this trigger resolve. Say no to that. Do the uncounterable shifting ceratops. Activate. Give it haste. I think I just go for the dome here rather than killing Teferi. Uh, but honestly, my situation is just like not good. It's like I can play out a second creature here, but that just leans me further into the like Terminus Supreme Verdict style cards that are already good against me. And a single removal spell also can just mean that the Hammer Skull doesn't untap. Oh. Uh, I mean, I go for it. It's just really fucking sad if my opponent instant speed uh, terminuses. But, you know, here we are. Let's get haste. We attempt an attack on your life. Tunico Burno. Fourth Aerolingas? It is fourth Aerolingas. Grrr. How is this worded? One more creature you control. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty devastating. So, like, I can activate for two, a point of damage. Uh, my opponent has three islands, so I, I really can't afford to do that. Um, yeah, but that's pretty devastating. Lots of things die. All right. Second main phase. Yes. Red. Dinosaur. Opponent still has seven cards in hand. So I have two shifting ceratops in my graveyard. I have one shifting ceratops in exile, so I have one more of those things that can maybe do cool stuff. That's rough. Also, just cantrips at this point. Sure. More up the beanstalk action. And redeploying the one ring. Which allows my opponent to safely get a solitude hit in. Uh, although that lets me kill Teferi, because this gives you protection from everything, including my fucking carpet of flowers. But that's all right. The dinosaurs will march on. All right, ship in at Teferi. Teferi goes down. The one ring isn't getting bounced again. These aren't getting bounced, but... You know, one fourth air lingas, terminus, supreme verdict, or two spot removal spells. Um, just kind of leaves me in a bad spot. What is this? The five, five, three. Okay. No block. Take a few life points back. Uh, that's just a plus two. That just probably means some nonsense is coming. Oh, we're not going to use this. Well, I guess I can use this mana in case this stuff gets bounced. Send out your life total. That's a solitude that cantrips twice. Maybe they'll mess up and target my ward thing. They did not. And that trades with this. Thanks, I hate it. 
All right, they're going to draw some cards off the one ring. I get an awful lot of nothing. And I just don't think I can realistically win from here. I'll probably concede to one more reasonable card from my opponent. Yeah, that'll that'll do. I think with an Uro coming back, like Uro means that the one ring isn't possibly going to be lethal. Yeah, I I think that's enough. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we are getting absolutely demolished, but I'm going to see if I can put at least a single win on the board here. All right, we have a reasonable Magic the Gathering hand that has a turn one mana accelerant, turn two three drop, turn... Sorry, turn two three drop, turn three six drop. I think I just don't really want to be wastelanded here. And I have three red sources in hand, not counting the Ignoble Hierarch, so I don't think I need to worry about being bottlenecked on red red. All right, we got that forest. Play Mana Dork. And we will entrust the dreams of the dinosaurs to you, Ignoble Hierarch. Sure, sure, sure. We are playing against lands and tabernacle. Fantastic. Uh, well, this is just going to kind of be miserable. In that, like, I am trying to put multiple creatures on board versus a early tabernacle. But hopefully that means my opponent has minimal removal for the things that I've got going on. Uh, sure. I don't have Uro, too. Yeah. Wasteland is annoying. Second Wasteland, sure. We'll pay. Let's let a cavern get Wastelanded, I guess. And uh, hopefully Trumpet Carnosaur does some good work. Opponent does not have very many cards in Graveyard to bring back Uro right now. We can probably wait, waste, uh, race that. Uh, Blast Zones, whatever. Cavern down. The One Ring. Uh, that is annoying, because that means that my Prowl doesn't work. This is on combat damage specifically. Uh, so that is a successful time walk from my opponent in terms of my resources. That doesn't really make sense to play out. I don't even think I want to play a land. <sighs> Prowl situation is so bad versus Wasteland and Tabernacle. Maybe I have to. All right. Put it on Dinosaur and pass. Like, assuming I pay for two mana for these and then my opponent Wastelands this, I just, like, don't have mana left to get to, like, do this six drop afterwards. This is highly frustrating, because I think I just roll my opponent if they don't have that natural turn one tabernacle. Like, this hand was objectively incredibly fast. Now Maze of Ith, so I never get to Prowl. Cool, cool. Alright. With the One Ring and Uro and Blast Zone, I think we could just stop this game. Like, this just produces Uro immediately. I'm out. Let's try again. Lightning Bolt's not particularly good here. I think those are going to come out for Ley Lines to stop Uro. It's possible I want a little bit of this, like, Collector Oof, Force of Vigor, Meltdown stuff. But I think I'm just going to try to kill my opponent when I'm on the play rather than respond to their stuff. And then when I'm on the draw, I'll play um, probably Force of Vigors and Meltdown to better respect um, Urza Saga, assuming that I see it in game two. So, with any colored card drawn, this is turn two Velociraptor, turn three Carnage Tyrant, in theory. But I think I just mulligan this and try to play something faster. Eh. This isn't a standalone threat, unfortunately. This is a mediocre hand that I think I keep rather than going to five. We're going to go with the Grove. And hope the top of the deck treats us well. Like, assuming I can produce one more dinosaur, this hand is perfectly fine. There's the Exploration. And a Wasteland. Alright, sure. I still have three mana on my turn to produce a dinosaur, but it is the follow-up dinosaur so that this can continue to attack, that actually matters. Uh, 
God damn it. All right. So this destroys one of my creatures per turn cycle until I have no creatures. And because there's a Maze of Ith in play, I can't just power through this. So this is just going to be two time walks for my opponent while I just let it destroy my shit. Which I think is the plan over trying to force a game win through Maze of Ith and Drop of Honey. And I don't even attack here because of the whole stun counter situation. Alright, yeah. Sure. Another maze, and if they're doing that, that means they have life from the loam. Okay. Sure. Doesn't really make sense that the last card is life from the loam. I don't think I can skip this land drop, though. Alright. Put it on dinosaur and pass. Alright, so drop of honey is gone, but if my opponent's last card is life from the loam, I just auto-concede. Okay, it's not life from the loam. Or, I mean, like, it still could be, but... Alright, I at least get to cast a spell here. This spell doesn't do a lot in the face of active Uro. I don't currently have real red mana to do a combat trick with Trumpeting Carnosaur, uh, which is frustrating. They played a Mox Diamond uh, with nothing to discard just to put another card into the graveyard for Uro. So they could keep something more meaningful in there for later. Sure. Not a land, so they've got a spell of some kind. I miss on the land drop here, uh, and at this point with active Uro and Maze of Ith, I think we can call this one a perfect league. Zero game wins, ten losses. All right, so this just didn't work, and... Let's try to figure out why. The, the obvious reason is that this deck list is trying to force a theme that's not good enough for Legacy. Like, when, when we talk about Dinosaur Stompy from, you know, eons long since past, like, it was just playing Shifting Ceratops and Carnage Tyrant because they were uncounterable, and it was playing them alongside a very large number of lock pieces and then maybe other powerful mono green cards, you know, things that take the monarch or initiative, things of that general nature. And instead, this deck is trying to, like, maximize a Cavern of Souls on Dinosaur. And when you do that, you make it harder to cast any spells in your deck that are not that chosen creature type. And that becomes relevant with sideboard cards as well. So forcing the theme is the biggest part. Beyond that, maybe I needed to lean more in one direction. Like either I lean more into large mana and try to make these endgame cards more castable with even more ramp than what I was doing. Or I go stupider and I make it so that if I ever connect with this, I play a game-ending dinosaur rather than dinosaurs that are castable. And the third direction you can take this is, like, just play the best of the dinosaurs, but, like, of these cards, what's really playable by legacy standards? Really, on, like, only shifting Ceratops barely, and maybe Carnage Tyrant in a big ramp deck? Like, this is cool, but the difference between Cascade and Discover is very, very noticeable in legacy. I do think we hit some poor variants today. Like, I think literally mulling, mulliganing down to one against Oops All Spells and never seeing a ley line, for example, is a little ridiculous. The deck's never going to have the ability to control, like, when it does and doesn't flood. Maybe I went a little heavy on mana, but the deck definitely needs to be, like, 50% mana, just mathematically to go and cast these cards when you intend on casting them so yeah if you have thoughts on dinosaurs let me know down in the comments below because this was my best attempt at trying to make it work it goldfished well and it just fell apart to various forms of interaction throughout the league today but if you are crazy enough to want to uh, bring dinosaurs to your next fnm check out cool stuff inc and use promo code thrabenu to save five percent on your order Folks, I hope you enjoyed watching me get my butt kicked today. 
I'll be back tomorrow for hopefully a more competitive league. See ya. Okay, like well, one more thing before I go. I, I've sat on this video for a day and just something that comes up in the comments a lot, I, I figured I should address. You know, so, sometimes we get bullied. Sometimes we just like play a deck and it doesn't work and, we, you know, we won 4 oh, 5 whatever. And in some people's minds, like that's a failure of a league. But when a league goes wrong and we get bullied and it doesn't work, there's tangible take-home messages to learn from those leagues. Often something about mana bases, ratios of cards, trying to force an idea that's not quite strong enough. There are things to be learned from an 05 day. And I, I don't know that I do a good enough job of vocalizing that exact thought. So we didn't put wins on the scoreboard today, but we showcased some new cards. We got to see what they did, or in many cases, didn't do. And that learning is still worth quite a bit, even if I'm not walking away with play points and wins. Uh, it's not all about the W's on this channel, and if it was, there would not be a lot of variety in what decks that I was playing on the channel. Okay, now actually have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya!